All right, Advanced Math A, here we go. We got lesson 5.2.1, Sequences. We're going to do this in two parts because it's kind of a long lesson. So here we go. So Sam, Samantha was thinking about George and Lenny and their rabbits because uh, I'm sure you have been too, just thinking about rabbits. So when she listed the number of rabbits that George and Lenny could have at the end of each month, she decided to just make a list of numbers instead of having an X you know, for the number of months and a Y for being the number of rabbits, she just wrote down the number of rabbits each month. And this is what we would call a sequence. So she started with six rabbits, then got to 18, 54, 162, the dot, dot, dot is an ellipse, ellipses, something like that. And it just means that it keeps on going in the same pattern forever. Now she realized that she could represent the situation using a sequence generating machine. I already entered some of this stuff because I messed up and I hit stop instead of pause at some point. So we're just going to move this down as we go. Okay, so, uh, so she realized that she could do a machine that uh, looks at the number of rabbits each month by using some kind of you know, operation to using the next one. So anyways, uh, the six represents the first term. We call that uh, T of one or T one in this situation. So she's got these machines set up. Six is her first number. The machine does something to the six and it spits out an 18. The 18 becomes the input of the next function machine. Now these function machines are all going to do the same function or a sequence machine in this case. So the output becomes 18, and then we go, okay, chugga, 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 18, out pops 54. 54 becomes the input for the next one, machine goes chugga, 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 and then spits out 162. So that's how she's looking at the rabbit scenario. She's looking at them as a sequence. So sequence, it looks a lot different from everything we've done before, because it's just a bunch of numbers in order without an X and a Y in this case. Okay, so what does Samantha's sequence generator seem to be doing to each input? So input of six, output of 18. Input of 18, output of 54. Input of 54, output of 162. And I think that we can see that what's happening is we're multiplying the input by three each time. All right, and we've already pretty much done this on the uh, rabbits thing. It's uh, one, of our, uh, one of our situations we're looking at. Okay, what are the next two terms of Samantha's sequence? Well, to find the next two terms, the 162 would become the uh, input of the next one. So I could just take 162 and multiply by 3. So 4e6 should be the next one. And the one after that, I just multiply by 3 again. And I get 1458. So that's my next 2. All right. What if the first term, so instead of 6, what if the first term was 4? So we're going to keep the same sequence generating machine, but instead of the input being 6 at the beginning, we're going to be doing an input of 4 what would be the next four terms? Well, I would start with four. That's my first term. Plug it into the machine, chugga, chugga, chugga. It spits out a 12, because we're multiplying by three. This becomes the input of the next one, chugga, chugga, chugga. Multiply by three, we get 36. Multiply by three, we get 108. Multiply by three, we get 324. Those are the next four terms of the sequence. All right, so, here, now in class, we just kind of do this in breakout rooms, but if you're just watching because you're not here or you're just kind of reviewing the material, that's fine too. What I want you to do is look at each of these different situations, and the first thing I want you to do is determine a growth pattern for each of these sequences. So each of these are growing a different way. They might be adding a number. They might be subtracting a number, multiplying, dividing a number. A lot of different things that could be happening. And there's even some in here that are not multiplying, dividing, adding, or subtracting. So I want you to find the growth patterns. 
some of them, are, there's a couple of them that are a little bit tricky. So just see if you can find out how they're growing. They all are growing by some kind of pattern. The ones that aren't addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division are the tricky ones. All right, the other thing I want you to do is sort the sequences into some kind of families that have common characteristics. And I want you to have more than two families. And then we're going to describe them. All right, so I'm going to pause, and hopefully I won't hit stop this time. Yeah, there's the pause button. I'm going to hit pause. You take a, a second to go through each of them and find how they are growing each time. All right, so this is the part where you work. I'm pausing now. All right, so you probably saw that some of those were a little bit harder than other ones. And what we've got here is in the first one, you probably saw that we were adding three each time. So if I would continue this sequence, the next number would be 8, and the next number after that would be 11, because we would just continue to add 3 to each one. Okay, for the next one, we were multiplying by 2 each time. 1.5 times 2 is 3, and keep on going. So the next 2 for this one would be 24, and then 48. For part C... This one was probably one of the tricky ones. This is a list of perfect squares. Zero to the second, one to the second, two to the second, three to the second. And so if I did the next one in the group, it would be four to the second, which is 16. And the next one would be five to the second, which would be 25. That was a little bit tricky. Next one, we're adding 1.5 each time. So if I'm adding 1.5, the next number would be eight. I don't know why I did that. 8, and then the next one to that, if I add 1.5 to 8, would be 9.5. Over here, this one's called Fibonacci sequence. Well, it's part of Fibonacci sequence. In Fibonacci sequence, we add together the previous two terms. So there were no previous terms for this one, so you're starting with 1. Here, the previous two terms were 1 and nothing, so that's why this is 1. This one, the previous two are 1 and 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2. This one, the previous two are 2 and 1, so 1 plus 2 is 3. This one, the previous two were 3 and 2, so 2 plus 3 is 5. This one, the previous two are 5 and 3, so that's why this one's 8. And then on this one, after that, we'd say, okay, 8 plus 5 is 13, so our next one would be 13. And then to get to the next number, we do 13 plus 8 and end up with 21. So we're just adding the previous two number combinations together. Another tricky one. This one we're subtracting to each time. So the, if I continue with the sequence, the next number would be 1. And then if I subtract 2 from 1, I would get negative 1. For G, we're dividing by 2 each time. <clears throat> so, or we can also call it multiplying by 1 half. So the next term, 12 divided by 2 would be 6. Next one after that would be 3. This one, we're dividing by 3. Some of you might also see that this is powers of 3. So this is 3 to the third, 3 to the second, 3 to the first, 3 to the zero power. And then after that, we would, if we continue to divide by 3, we get 1 third and then 1 ninth. Last two. This one was probably one of the trickier ones. So what we saw here is that if we looked at the first differences, we got negative 6, negative 2, 2, 6, 10. Didn't look like there was much of a pattern there. But we did notice that these differences here were all different by 4. So they're adding four more to the difference each time. So the next difference should be 14. So 18 plus 14, that would give us a total of 32. And then the next dis difference should be 18. So 32 plus 18 ends up giving us 50. That one was tough. It's like all the ones on this one are tough. So perfect squares, Fibonacci's, and then over here, we've got a adding four to the difference each time. 
All right, lastly, we're multiplying by 2 each time on this one. So 20 would be my next one, and then 40 would be the next one after that. And we could keep on going. All right, so now we're going to sort these into families. Well, addition and subtraction are really kind of the same thing. If you notice over here when I said subtract, it's like we're adding negative 2. So I would probably do an addition and subtraction family if I were doing this. So I'd say, okay, there's an add slash subtract family. So which ones we're adding and subtracting? A was. Um, D. Uh, after that, F. G, no, H, no, I, no, no. All right, the next one I would call the multiplication or division pro, uh, family. I don't know why I did that dive. All right, so multiplication, division, that would be B. Uh, not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one. Uh, G. H. And J. And then I'd probably just call the other one other. So we'd have C was the perfect squares, E was the Fibonacci, and I was the adding four to the differences each time, which was kind of crazy. All right, so those are the families that I might sort them into if it were me doing it. Okay, and we're actually going to see coming up here that these two families have names. There's an actual name for the types of families. Before we get to that, we've got to finish off part two. So this is the end of part one. It's time to do part two. All right, see you in a little bit. Bye-bye. Math hard.